This is Witchbase News for Friday the 11th of November 2022 I'm Commander Burr. In Elite Dangerous News this week the Stargoids are now visible from Earth. That Thargoid scream has been deciphered and there's a new guide to essential materials for explorers. As always if you enjoy our stuff hit the thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and click the little bell icon to see all our Elite Dangerous content. You can also join our Patreon which directly supports the work we do here at the pit. Links to that and everything else are below. Commander Bowl of Petunias has created a fantastic written guide with a valuable visual element to it detailing the essential materials needed for deep space exploration. The guide is born from Petunias over 6 years of deep space exploration and focuses predominantly on the synthesis function. Synthesis can grant the explorer greater jump range, repair replenishment and even oxygen for life support but it is often ignored in the expedition preparation stages in favour of material gathering for engineering elements such as jump range and mass reduction etc. The guide from Bowl of Petunias paints an easy to read and understand picture of just what materials the long range explorer should be gathering and where those materials can best be leveraged to get the best bang for your buck. You'll find BLP's essential guide for explorer materials that matter linked in the description below this video. Without wishing to tempt fate to throw the community a curveball I'm now going to tempt fate to throw the community a curveball. As of this recording there are still 8 unknown interstellar phenomena or stargoids headed directly toward the bubble so right now at least it seems safe to assume that we'll have 8 of whatever they are to deal with when they arrive wherever it is they're going to arrive assuming they arrive somewhere and don't just go sailing off into the black ignoring us completely which is of course a possibility albeit an unlikely one. Again as of this recording and perhaps unsurprisingly the first 3 to be detected are now the closest. Stargoid 1 being now just 300 light years from Sol and brace yourself it's now just about visible in the sky above Earth with the right lighting conditions. Because of a peculiarity in the way Odyssey's lighting works the stargoids are actually much clearer when your ship itself is very brightly lit by the local conditions but if you travel to Sol orient your ship towards Barnard's loop you should see a faint red star appearing almost smack bang in the middle of the nebula. That faint red dot is Stargoid 1. However if you're much closer to the approaching jellyfish of despair then this is what you'll see. With update 14 expected to arrive in around 3 weeks that view from Earth is absolutely likely to change. It remains to be seen by how much however. Indeed it remains to be seen if the view of Earth changes along with it. As of this recording we know almost nothing about update 14. Frontier are currently scheduled to livestream on the 17th of November next week unless they add an extra livestream into the fortnightly schedule or switch it around in some other regard next Thursday will be the only livestream opportunity they have to talk about update 14 before the end of November. Make of that what you will. And in a very late piece of breaking news quite literally just as we were going to press a new Galnet piece has been published stating that the FSS scanner in all commanders ships has been updated with the latest information gathered from scientists including those at Canon Research. The end result is that the stargoids can now be tracked in system and for want of a better expression can be zoomed into in the scanner like a regular signal source as they now show up as part of the scanned spectrum in the device. Tracking the object causes visible glitching in the scanner and the noise being emitted by the stargoids also appears to have been significantly beefed up. When you enter the scanner now to track one of the objects this is what you'll see and hear.
As I've said this news literally broke as we were going to press. If there are any further updates as the community gets to grip with the updated tool we'll post it to our YouTube community pages. After a Galnet News article late yesterday was released into the in game news feed the community got its first partial answer at least to the question just what was that roar heard in HIP 22460. What's commonly referred to as the Thargoid roar was triggered as a direct result of the detonation of the Proteus wave device by everyone's favourite bargain basement messiah Salvation in August. Nearly 3 months on we're still guessing that the roar was Thargoid in origin and probably had something to do with the subsequent arrival of the Stargoids but we couldn't 100% prove it for certain. However Following a joint statement from that most respected trinity of science ...Professor Alba Tezero formerly of Aegis, Professor Ishmael Palin of the Palin Research Institute and ...not a professor apparently but I'm sure very learned nonetheless Ram Tarr ...we now know more than we did before. The trio have previously formed a quartet with Seo Jin A, the artist formerly known as D2, who, after the ministration of Salvation and his house of mad medicine, found herself with neural implants that are specifically designed to interface with Thargoid technology. The result of their combined brain power and Ramtar's certificate of higher education has led them to the revelation that at least part of the raw was what they're calling a call and response element. The statement goes on to say that the raw was a reply to the Thargoid forces in HIP 22460 and Seojin A interprets its implied meaning as quote ...we see them, we are coming unquote. I personally think it's safe to assume that the them the raw is referring to is us as the response was apparently directed at the Thargoid forces in HIP. As much as I'd love to believe that the Thargoids in HIP were changed somehow by the Guardian influences inflicted upon them it does seem likely that what has actually happened is something more entirely basic. The salvation attack was so initially devastating to the Thargoids that they have now properly noticed us and consider us a credible threat. The Fab 4 are also saying that they believe they have determined that the raw came from what they're referring to as quote a single Thargoid entity unquote. Seo Jin A is also saying that she believes the Stargoids whatever they are have been deployed by the Thargoids as a direct response to the Proteus wave event. Whilst this is an obvious conclusion from the perspective of the player base this is the first time that we've had that belief confirmed by the game. The piece finishes by saying that the collective brainiacs believe the Thargoid war is about to enter a new phase and that we are not yet at least prepared for it. The direct implication from that being that there will be preparations in our future that we will be able to make. As I've said in this piece the Stargoids being of Thargoid origin and as a result of the HIP events is not a surprise to the player base but it is nice to have it finally underlined. What was particularly interesting from Seo Jin A's understanding of what she was able to decipher was that the raw came from a single Thargoid entity. That Frontier have chosen to highlight that fact in the story is particularly fascinating. Is this perhaps the first detectable noise from the long suspected and rumoured Thargoid Queen? And with Thargoid and Xeno advocacy being such a hot topic in the game at the moment will we someday be able to roar back establishing something akin to a dialogue with that entity? Do you believe the raw came from a Thargoid Queen? Have you taken yourself out to see the Stargoids yet? Do you believe we could or should attempt to communicate with the Thargoids? Let us know in the comments below. That's it for now. Thanks very much for watching. We'll be back later this week with more videos. Until then 07 CMDRs follow the greens on the way out and do keep clear of the toast rack. We very much look forward to seeing you next time.